From San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Big Data SV 2016. Now your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, hey, welcome back on. We are live in Silicon Valley for our third day of Big Data Week coverage which is, consists of Big Data, SV, and Strata Hadoop. I'm John Furrier, this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, and my co-host, George Gilbert, analyst at wikibon.com, and our next guest, Budar Sudhakar, VP of GM at Splunk, entrepreneur, sold two companies, um, been in the business for big data. We've had conversations going back years, I do, and we hit very active on CrowdChat on this event and all, all the other events. You're at the front end of all the innovation, which I love, why well, I would love to talk with you because not only are you now working at the big company, but you're an entrepreneur, so you, you can, you always see things early. And I like to get, get your take on a few things. First thing I always want to get out, out of, on the table right away is, the valuations of the of the of the unicorns. We had Holden on earlier. She had a shirt that said, "You know, I will cut you as a unicorn." Looked looked like an angry <laughs> unicorn. Uh, the unicorns are not happy right now. Cloudera got chopped down in valuation, 38 percent, and you're seeing a lot of other companies uh, getting chopped down as well, uh, mainly because this overhyped. But the revenue model. So you know, is is the big data business model working out? And and what's your take on that? What's your thoughts on this overvaluation, the liquidity shortage, and can, you know, softening, if you will, the capital markets? No, it's a definitely a good question. I think from my view is, uh, um, if you look at all the big data players, I think the issue is the markets in general have taken a hit, and that's probably the same shaving people are applying to the unicorns and the big data companies. But there is a real big data problem to be solved here. I think we just have to step aside from, as John, you've been telling me for the last four or five years, we, the, movie in the, the movie now, the playbook here, is not about technologies and bits and pieces. Uh, the next movie here will be is finding the big data applications, solve a real problem, a real use case. And that I see as a big value that customers are willing to pay and the top dollars. And that's kind of something worked for me also. If I look at what we did at Caspira, we didn't focus on the technology. We solved a cybersecurity problem. And as, as, at the end of the day, if you solve a problem and go address their value prop, customers will come and buy and there's a business model to be made. Yeah, it's easy to hit go, go the low-hanging fruit and talk about valuations and make a generalization across the board, which I just did, but I want to kind of go down a little bit deeper. You mentioned sure. solving problems. We talk about that, but that's the ecosystem play. Now, the ecosystem is not just Adobe. It's not just Cloudera and Hortonworks anymore. We've shown this 10 years old how so much more meat on the bone has come around the ecosystem, and right. it's not just Hadoop. When we had one guest on earlier said, Spark cut the head off Hadoop and the cloud's cutting the legs off. So all you got is a torso. Awesome. So, you know, the nickname's now Bob. Um, can, 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 can resist that joke. But no, seriously, the torso is the Hadoop, but stuff wrapped around it. Right. So what's I your take on that valuation of those companies? Will I they make money and what's the business model? No, I think the Hadoop stack, I call it Hadoop ecosystem stack, is different. Uh, is different. Like if you take a look at the spa, if you look at Spark has become a part of the Hadoop stack, we, I, I see the view from the uh, Splunk side is, look, Splunk became the machine data fabric for a while. It's been there. I think that what's, what has happened with, uh, with Splunk is being applied and also in the Hadoop sector today. So today, if you look at the data is being sent to the Splunk, there are apps being, Splunk is a data fabric, we call it a machine data fabric, there are apps being built. I think that same movie will be played out of playbook in the Hadoop ecosystem. Spark is adding a layer on top of that, but you still need to add the machine learning libraries that you talk about and the app on top of it, right? But what we see is we think, uh, to your point earlier, we see Splunk and Hadoop as a coexistence. We are an operation store, we are a batch system and a real time in Splunk, but there are enough workloads that can be done with us and apps built on top of Splunk that are actually moved also to Hadoop. So we want to coexist with both of this. I see customers doing yeah. both. And we've seen Teradata on, Informatica's been on, all the, all the big data warehousing guys are on, and they're making their changes. But the answer is really clear. If coexistence really means there's more tools, yes. not just a hammer and a nail or a manual saw. You have all kinds of tools in the tool chest here, and Hadoop is one of them. So the question I ask you is, what do you see as the rationalization of these new tools? Because you mentioned Splunk has this already, so why should that, this happen in Hadoop? Sure. So you're seeing Hadoop almost getting trimmed down it seems like the Hadoop and the Hadoop players have overplayed their hand in a lot of areas where services already exist, so the coexistence and integration is the play. 
Right. No, I think you, you nailed it. I think I see the view, like as I talked about, if you take the view of the Splunk, Splunk query language works. Splunk also supports through Hunk the Hadoop platform, right? So from a customer perspective, they go to an application where you build a healthcare application and insurance or security that we are in an app revolution, right? Apple really changed the last four or five years. Every customer that I talk to, they want an app. Underneath whether the technology pieces exist or not, it's okay. They need a platform to build an app. That platform could be Splunk, it could be also Hadoop ecosystem, but they want to build an app. People consume applications, people consume users, and they want to be in an app economy right now. Before George gets his question, I know he wants to get a question, and you had a tweet, I want to read your tweet, I want to get your thoughts on it. Uh, let's have a debate discussion on encryption for data in Hadoop. Cassandra, MongoDB, Oracle, question mark. Customers keep asking about encrypting big data, which is valuable and sensitive. What are people's views on this Hadoop world? So we've been p polling people, and the general opinion is, kind of deer in the headlights look. They're like, what do I, what's going on? What's your thoughts? I mean, you, you're in this area, Splunk obviously big on security. Where, what is the security equation in Hadoop, in Mongo, in Cassandra, in Oracle? No, I think that's very important. I think given that the, at least the last one month, given the debate between Apple and FBI being encryption, encryption is on the top of everybody's mind. I think that movie will pay out in, in all industry. That means you need to secure the data that's sitting in MongoDB, you need to secure the data sitting in uh, Hadoop, in all of them. No, it's, encryption alone is not the problem. As you know, it's en the key management. Who owns the keys? Uh, do you want to give the keys owned by the vendor? Does the customer own the key? That whole thing has not happened in the big data. And that's what I was talking about. Well, Larry Ellison said on stage, I was there at uh, Oracle Open World, encryption is always on. The default is encryption, and the exception is turning it off. No, that like seems that. where the Oracle wants to go. No, I, I completely agree. I think encryption. The question is, who owns the key, though? It's not the on and off the encryption. Yeah. Do you manage the keys as a customer and a user? Uh, does the vendor is going to own your keys for you? In that case, what will happen? So I think that's a big debate that's happening right now. Is so that goes back. You to can the encrypt apps. things too, but you still got the insider threat. Yeah, you still have the insider threat. But the question is, good news is if you have an encrypted data, and even if an insider takes the data, if he doesn't have the keys, then your data is still secure. Right? I mean, there's angles to play out there. You were talking about applications and that with, with Splunk, it's been generalizing more to be a more uh, an application-centric thing than, than just a um, sort of out-of-the-box single app or, or dual app sort of solution. And now that Hadoop is so widely deployed and, and Splunk as well, how would you tell customers sort of when to think about building in Splunk an application versus when to think about building on, on Hadoop? It's a good question. I think the way in which I see it is, today Splunk has been the machine data fabric for almost 11,000 customers we have, right? And they have premium applications, we call it, whether it's Caspira is a company, we have enterprise security, we have uh, IT ops, HC. So there are enough premium applications, and we have ecosystem of partners who are building around Splunk. Now, we, if customer wants, we give the choice to customer. If customer feels that the data should go into Hadoop for archival reasons, we, there are tools with Splunk and other people will help you move the data from Splunk into Hadoop, but the app still works. The keys, again, goes back to the app. The user experience, the application that you are trying to solve, that should be the thing. It's, I think of the, the Hadoop ecosystem is playing almost like that, uh, what I call in the storage world, the tiers of the storage. What you do with your uh, data, how do you get insights? How fast can you get your operation insight? What can you do? What kind of actions can you take on? What's the workflow? Those are the areas that Splunk does a very good job out of the box quickly. If the Hadoop ecosystem vendors want to do that, they need to solve very similar problems like Splunk is doing. But also integrate Splunk already is doing that in the application. So I think if you do that in the application, whether the data sits in Splunk or in Hadoop, it'll be a complementary solution. But you talk about the startup landscape. Again, you have a unique perspective. You're at the big company now. You see what the Splunk machine's doing in terms of the management and the product roadmap and whatnot over there. Obviously secure. Looking forward to the dot, uh, dot conf again this year with the Cube there at Splunk's conference. A little plug for Splunk. I've got the Cube coming there this year. Thank but you. the but the startup landscape is, is certainly still dynamic and strong at the a, at the series seed and series A. Series Bs are very difficult. If you're a series B, a company looking for a Series B, it's a pretty tough market right now to get that funding because the traction has to be on the revenue side. Right. And so we're, what would your advice be and what's your take on the overall landscape right now for those you know, entrepreneurs out there? Because this is where the breakout brand's going to come in. I was saying, and but Peter Burris showed a slide, no one really has 10% share of anything. So the game's wide open. A, the next Uber-like companies might come out of this crop of innovation. 
Right. No, uh, no, I, I think this is very good. See, here is my mantra that I've applied, at least for my startups. In this day and age, I call the Moore's Law. In 12 to 18 months, if you're a CDC company and you don't have a million revenue, you're in trouble. Because technology is changing so fast. 18 months, a million revenue yeah. a month or a year? A, a million in revenue in a year. Okay. Right? If you're a startup and if you have reached, not reached a million revenue run rate in 18 months and you're applying for a Series B, I mean, you're going to get down rounds or you, maybe you'll be may not get a chance to even finance it. So all the Series A companies, the best thing they can do is find customers. And again, revenue of a million dollars don't get them with $10,000 each. I would even might say that, you know, in this market, it might be tighter. It might be, you know, a million dollars a month or a $10 million run rate because you're seeing so strict revenue focus right now. It seems to be... It is, it is. If but you have technology, they'll give you a pass so they right, can see that, right? Right. And also the type of customers you get it. Again, uh, there are two ways. I call it the, get the big game hunters. So getting a, a million dollar deal or a half a million dollar deal customer is more important than getting 10 customers of $20,000. Right? So it's important if I'm a startup company, I want to get the big account, see, can I repeat them? If you get four or five deals of a half a million dollars or a million dollar accounts, yeah. then they know there's a business model to be it's there. It's got to be repeatable, which is repeatable. cool. So the final question on the entrepreneur thing is, is um, the barrier to entry, it used to be when I uh, started uh, my first startup over 17 years ago, getting into the enterprise was very, very difficult because you had established companies. That was the application uh, boom during the people soft days. And so right. the bar to get in was seriously high. No one buys from startups. That was kind of a thing. Huge sales costs. Then the cloud era came during the era of, the, of Amazon. Startups had easy spinning up of solutions and were getting penetrations in the enterprise. Now we seem to be going to an era where it's like, now hard to stay in the enterprise. So it's not hard to get in, it's hard to stay, which brings up the integration conversation. Right. What's your take on that? Do you agree with that statement? And will, could you share your thoughts on how a startup can win, get into the enterprise, and what it takes to stay there? No, very good question. I think my advice to startup there is don't be an island. I mean, this is a great example of what you bring in is if you walk into an enterprise, become a, you tie yourself with all the other products. You tie yourself with uh, Splunk, you tie with Palo Alto, tie yourself with Oracle. I mean, you cannot be an alone. If you solve a piece of problem and you're an island and the user is using that product and he's not has a workflow with other products, you'll be taken out immediately. So I think a good startup is something you have figured out all the ecosystem of the partners he, he, they want to work with and they have a tight ISV integration, both at a technology level and a business level. That is the value that customers are looking for. That is one plus one plus one is not a three, it's 33. And that's what Peter Burch was saying yesterday about freeing the data and that's making the data frictionless, again, back to the value of the digital capital, yes. the data. That's right, right comment. Great. What's up with you? Anything uh, you're excited about these days? Final question. Just like, what's, what's, what are you kind of looking at right there in the marketplace? Where do you got your telescope aimed at? I think that my big thing is big data apps. Uh, I'm a big on apps. That's what the, my message today was here is, uh, I think people are too, too much focused on technology. Even with the machine learning libraries that we talked about in uh, CrowdChat yeah. also is, I want people to build app. Underneath is the libraries and technologies, et cetera. People need to focus on the problem and solution first and the apps. That's great vision. I would agree with you 100%. Great to see you. Madhu, entrepreneur, very successful entrepreneur, repeat entrepreneur, now working at Splunk as a senior executive. And we'll be at Splunk on September 26th. The dot conference is their annual conference. Always going to be a blast there. Last year, we were doing so many Cube interviews, I thought I was going to pass out. We might have to have two Cubes there this year at Splunk Conference. So, um, always great company. Uh, we'll be back more with live coverage here in Silicon Valley for the Cube, extracting the signal from the noise. Go to Twitter and search Cube Gems, hashtag Cube Gems and search hashtag cube cards. You're going to see photos with quotes and, and video highlights from these interviews. Of course, go to youtube.com slash siliconangle for all the videos and siliconangle.tv to check out where the cube's going to come next. We'll be right back with more after this short break.